Good morning. Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, welcome this time of worship as we celebrate Christ in this World Communion Sunday. The, the church sets aside this Sunday once a year uh, to recognize that we are all one in Christ no matter where we are in the world, uh, no matter uh, where we are nationally or otherwise. So this is a, a, a glorious Sunday morning as we celebrate Holy Communion together. I want to thank uh, Phil Unger for preaching in my stead last week. Uh, I, I saw and he did an absolutely outstanding job. It's, it's great to be able to leave and know that uh, uh, the church is in incredible hands. And so uh, it was great to have him. A lot going on in the life of the church here this coming week. And even tonight, we have the beginning of our new, uh, new program, uh, the, uh, our young adult group, 7 o'clock, right? Uh, 7 o'clock here, if you're out of high school, come on down to about 25. You all come if you want. No, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, if you're, if you're out of high school, college age, that, that, that group, uh, come join them for an absolute wonderful time of, uh, of fun and, and fellowship, and it looks like food as well. Um, Johanna. I got to get back to the rhythm here, I think. Good morning. Uh, I just want to call your attention to the flyer that's in this morning's bulletin about the roast beef dinner. That's coming up in two weeks. We can still use um, help with, at the um, dining room, kitchen help, and pies. We need pies. And I would just invite anyone that has never worked in one of these dinners to come and try it out because I'll tell you, it, you really get to know your neighbors well as you're serving it one of those things. Uh, tickets are on sale today uh, down by Fellowship Hall and they'll also be on sale after the second service in the in back of the sanctuary. Uh, secondly, uh, we have lots and lots of dishes down on the orphan table which is across from uh, Beth's office. Uh, if you could come and claim them, we'd really be great. We've got the Craft Bazaar coming up this Saturday, and they, they will have to move all those and find a home for them. So the less there are, the better it is. So if you've made a dish for us at some point, please go down and take your dish back home. Thank you. Okay, thank you. As uh, Jennifer comes up for the craft show, another reminder, this is the last day to sign up for the Young at Heart uh, Mon Ami trip uh, to Port Clinton, Ohio. See, see Jim if you're interested. Good morning, everyone. Guess what I need? Help, 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 help. We have our annual craft bazaar coming up this Saturday on the 12th. We need bakery, 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 bakery. We need help setting up in the morning on Friday before. We need help taking down on Saturday at four o'clock when we're done. 
Uh, if you have any questions or if you can help, please see me, see Karen, see Beth Allen, any of us after church, call, email, anything you can do would be very appreciated. This is one of our fundraisers that we do every year that supports all the mission projects that we do throughout the year. So help, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. Okay, thank you. I'll thank everybody in advance for helping. <laughs> Let us now greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come to God's house with singing and praise. Now please join me in our opening prayer as printed in your bulletin. God of creation, through your world is constantly changing, 
Your love for us never fades. Help us to know the joy of faith, even in the midst of the new chapters beginning in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us sing hymn 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. may be seated. As we get ready for Consecration Sunday two weeks from today, October 20th, I've been asked to share a few words with you about my thoughts of giving and what this church means to me. Um, as you probably know, I'm a fairly new member here. Uh, Darla and I started coming to worship here almost five years ago. And it's, it's really been a blessing to be a part of a church, a congregation, a congregation so full of such great and, and loving people. Um, we came here uh, with Pastor McLaren from uh, River of Life. And... It was such a refreshing change of scenery. We came from a church where we used to meet in a gymnasium, where it took two hours to set up and two hours to tear down. I was involved with the setup procedure. We were involved from seven in the morning till like one o'clock in the afternoon. So when I came here, I just felt that uh, this was a, a great transformation for me. And as I look around and see all you happy faces, I look at this grand, sanctuary and I look at everything that this church has to offer to all of us there are so many opportunities to serve and to give back to God the things that he's given to us 
We have so many activities that we as church members can take part in. Roast beef dinners, um, the Tuesday night suppers, all of our mission activities, uh, small Bible studies throughout the church and different nights and different days. <clears throat> so I, I feel quite blessed to be a part of this uh, congregation. And um, as we prepare for uh, Consecration Sunday, where we're asked to pledge our uh, financial support to the church, I simply look at it this way. I try to look at what God has done for me and try to put it in proportion to what I would like to give back to God. And uh, he gives us so much. And Tom continually reminds us of God's love for us. And you say, well, how, how do you know or how do we know that God loves us? Well, the Bible clearly tells us that God created us all in his image. What greater testimony could there be than that? And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, as a man to live among us, to show us how to live, to show us how to take care of the needs of others. So I simply ask that when you consider your pledge for, for the coming year, when we turn our pledge cards in two weeks from today, just give it your prayerful consideration. Sit down with God and say, God, put upon my heart what you would have me give. Give cheerfully and give knowing that what you give will help promote the growth of this church. And as I look back toward the back, I'm reminded of what Tom has been preaching for three years since he's been here. Go and make disciples. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today and praise God. Thank you, Dave, for witnessing your faith during this time. Many joys that surround us. And um, when, I, when I come back from taking a little time away from all of you saints here, I, I realize how absolutely blessed I am as your pastor and how incredibly blessed we are as a congregation here at Fields. And uh, to come back uh, to be amongst friends and, and family, it is, uh, it is a sign that God's presence is here and that God, God is in us and will continue to sustain us. Uh, that's an incredible joy. There's a lot of joys. Uh, uh, the joy of a new beginnings with the, with the evening festivities for our young adults. Uh, keep that group in your prayers as they begin and grow and flourish. Also, uh, pray for our, our upcoming uh, uh, craft, craft show and all that, all the fun that's going to happen with that, and everything else going on in the life of the church. Uh, in the midst of all these things, we do need to pray for uh, several people. If you, if you note those on the prayer list, I have uh, a few I'd like to add to the list as well. If you would please uh, pray for Jack Ashby, who is at St. John's Hospital, uh, Rick Jantz at St. John's Hospital. Prayers for our, our church secretary, Amy McHugh. Uh, she'll be having surgery a week from Tuesday. Uh, also, uh, Alicia DeConey uh, called me last night and asked for prayers for her as she comes up to her uh, first anniversary of her, of her mother's passing. And so please uh, keep Alicia in your prayers. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here this day? You who don't already know it, uh, Michael is celebrating his 50th birthday this week. I would like I would like to uh, present everybody to my daughter, who's come here to Ohio to drive me back home for a, a wedding, and in her that's my grandson that's getting married, and uh, it's it's a big time for us and. Uh, I will be back in three weeks. All right. Thank you, thank you, and keep us in your prayers. Okay. Travel blessings and celebration. Are there others? I want to um, ask for prayers for Kenneth. He is uh, a friend of ours, son, and uh, he is right now uh, was taken to the hospital last Friday. 
they're really not sure what happened, but he's been non-responsive, and they're talking about putting him on life support. Prayers for Kenneth. Anyone else? Yes, I'd like to have prayers for <clears throat> the Hogue family. Jim Hogue passed away yesterday. He uh, had a Jim heart attack. Hogue? Hogue, yes, Jim Hogue. Thank you. Okay. Family and friends of Jim Hogue. Are there others? that I am actually here in one piece and <laughs> stitches are coming out and I am so blessed. Thank you all for your thoughts and prayers. The Blackwell family, as they come upon the first anniversary of their son's death next week, and um, Michelle Dudick, um, is having a lot of issues and we really need to continue to keep her in our prayers. Prayers from Michelle and the Blackwell family. Anyone else? Let us then go to God in silent prayer. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Pour your power of grace, of love, of understanding, of healing, and especially of your presence these days. Lord God, we give you praise for the churches throughout the world that are celebrating on this World Communion Sunday because truly we are one table. One table with all those uh, in your churches throughout the world and also in your church, the great triumphant as well, Lord. And we, we know that we are um, communing also with those saints who have gone on before us this day. Lord God, as we, we gather in your house, we're so much to be thankful for. Thankful for another day to serve you. Thanks for another opportunity to uh, uh, do your work. Uh, in the world around us. Lord God, we, we thank you for this wonderful congregation and, and all those hands that work tirelessly for you. We, we give you thanks for our family, our friends, and our neighbors. And we give you thanks for the world that you have surrounded us with this day, Lord. And we, we celebrate that. We celebrate also the, the need for us to care for those uh, who, who are around us as well. Lord, we we gather here this day with joy, knowing that so many things are, are, uh, have caused us to be your blessed children. And, and that we give you uh, eternal thanks and praise. But in the midst of our, of our joys, there are many concerns that weigh upon our thoughts and in our minds this day. And Lord, we lift those up to you because, Lord, we're not strong enough to do these things on our own. We need you more now than ever before, Lord. We, we pray for your world, its leaders, and its people. We pray for our great country and the leadership of this country. We pray for our communities. We pray for our schools, our teachers, support staff, and administrators, and, and children, and their families. Lord God, keep them strong. Uh, keep them safe. Lord God, we, we also pray for those who are uh, anxious in their faith, who are frustrated in their faith, who have been... Uh, hurt and damaged in any way. Uh, Lord, we just pray for, for healing for them and, and comfort and understanding as well. Lord God, we pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Uh, we pray especially this day for the family and friends of Jim Hoka, the family and friends of Rose Henson, the family and friends of Jordan Hope, the family and friends of Muriel Rains. And Lord, we do pray for those who also are 
um, in the midst of their mourning and grief as they've lost loved ones in the past several months and, and uh, this past year, Lord God. Give them comfort in knowing that you are with them now and, and will be with them as they continue this journey. Lord God, we, we pray for those who are homebound, hospitalized, those who are recovering uh, from surgeries and, and challenges, and, and also their families, Lord God. We pray for strength for them. Lord, this day we especially lift up to you Jack and Rick, Amy and Alicia, for Lynn and Bob and Rita, for Vic and David and Mayor, for Carol and Jamie and Marvin, for the Blackwell family, for Amy and Diana, for Lonnie and Tom, for Georgia and Danita and for Kenneth, and, and for Michelle and for all of those others, we lift it up to you in the silence of our hearts, Lord God. By your Holy Spirit, heal their bodies, nourish their faith, set them all rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. And now, Lord God, we pray your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one of us as we uh, seek to do your work and do your will with the gifts you have provided to us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who through his disciples taught us to live and pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture lesson comes from Philippians 1, verses 21 through 30. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor, labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that my thoughts, my, th that through my being, with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or I hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, you now hear that I still have. Now let us give our tithes and offering.
Lord God, thank you for the privilege to serve. Thank you for the joy to give. Bless these gifts and multiply them to your ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, choir. I'd like to ask the children to come forward for a children's chat. Come on down. What's this? What's special about this bread? It looks a little different, doesn't it? I think this bread, all this bread, represents people from all over the world. Do you know that? I'm not sure where all this is from, but it's just not types of bread that we make here in the United States. There could be some that are in South America, or some in Africa, or some in Asia, or some all over the world. This morning we celebrate something really special, and that's World Communion Sunday, and it's when people take all types of bread and they break it, but guess what? We all do it for, for one reason. You know what? We do it because we eat together all over the world. Can you imagine every church, no matter what type of bread that they have at, the, at their communion table, uh, this looks really, really good. It's too early to eat, though, isn't it? But uh, no matter what type of bread is made, it's all made with different ingredients and all the ingredients come together for, for making that one piece of bread that's really good. But they all come together and they eat, the, they eat at the same time we do because we celebrate Jesus that way. Because the bread represents Jesus. And, and what it means, and when we eat the bread, we're, we're saying, well, gosh, that means that Jesus is inside of us and really a part of us. And this is a big, big table. So imagine how big do you think a table has to be to fit 
everybody in the world. Yeah, that big. It has to be really, really big. And so I use my imagination a lot, and I think about it. I, I close my eyes, and I just think about all the people who are going to have communion with us this morning, all the people who are here, and all the people who are in heaven, too, because they take communion along with us. And that's, yeah, it's really big, big, big table. So someday, close your eyes and just think about how many people that God loves and, and invites to this table. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the bread, and thank you for all the people of the world that, that you do nothing but celebrate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for coming down this morning. Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your words proclaim that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The gospel this morning... It's one of my favorite parables of Jesus in, in the Gospel of St. Matthew in the 20th chapter. It's one that uh, really gets a lot of discussion going every once in a while um, about God's kingdom. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about 9 o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also get into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. And so they went. When he went out again about noon and about 3 o'clock, he did the same. About 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last, then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage, which was one denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with, with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Matthew's Gospel this morning opens up a portal to what the kingdom of God is all about. A kingdom, or we could call a kingdom a, an organization, a, a small group, uh, or anything the like. It's a kingdom not manufactured by human design, but offered to us with power and grace by the creator of the universe. The kingdoms of the world are marked by names like third world, developed, the wealthy, the poor, the middle class, corporations, small business, churches, synagogues. And within each one of those kingdoms, labels may be different, but all say the same thing. Freshman, intern, newbie, first year, rookie, proletarian, bourgeoisie, I like those two words, neophyte, working class, blue collar, white collar, whatever it might be. Then, on top of them is the ruling class, the senior, the resident, the seasoned veteran, 
the experienced, the master. Those with more money, those with more time on the job and the birthright are usually given more perks, more money, more attention. In fact, even at our annual conference at Lakeside in the summertime, what do we do? We lift up uh, those who have been ordained the longest in our conference. We'll lift up those who have been ordained for, well, there's some for 65 years, some for 60 years, and some for 30, 20, 10. And we also lift up those who have attended the annual conference the longest. You see, tenure means something. I remember there was a church that I served and on Mother's Day, which didn't thrill me a lot, but their tradition was that they lifted up the oldest mom. If I would tell my mother she was the oldest mom in the church, I wouldn't be standing here. But, <laughs> but they would celebrate the oldest mom, the mom with the most kids, and, and on and on and on. All those new to an organization, having said all this, needs to pay their dues. And then there's outrage in our society, isn't there, when someone, a rookie comes in a first year, gets paid the same as a 20-year veteran. What if you just stepped ahead of all the people who paid their dues in an organization and became the head of the organization? Have you ever seen that happen? Have you ever seen the results of that happening? We begin to wage war on those who don't pay their dues. We say it's not fair. We chant over and over and over again, that's not right. There ought to be rules, and some organizations do have rules that, that exclude all those who are new to the organization to be in the, uh, the hallowed halls at, at, the, at the top of the building or whatever it might be. It might take a few years to get the key to the executive's washroom, whatever the case is. And when they get that, or if they get that, the roof is raised. We love to have disdain for those we feel do not deserve the position they are in. So now the Jesus words. He's talking about the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of people. And he, and he reflects upon a, a vineyard owner who had a bumper crop of grapes. And so anybody with a bumper crop of grapes needs to get grape pickers, right? you got to pick the grapes, otherwise they'll, they'll go bad. And so 6 o'clock in the morning, he goes to the hall, and he sees these folks. He says, go out and pick my grapes. And they did. And then a little bit later, he realized he needed more, so he goes back at 9 o'clock in the morning to the same place and says, I need more help. And they, they gladly did that. And he did the same at 12, the same at 3, and guess what? The same at 5 in the afternoon. When it came time to pay, people started looking at those at 5 o'clock and saying, boy, I'll tell you what, what a terrible work ethic. They probably didn't get up till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. They've probably been out late all night. All they need to work for is their next beer money or whatever it might be. They show up unshaven, no makeup, no nice do or anything like that. Surely, surely we'll be blessed over them. The Jewish tradition was that at the end of a day's work, you get paid. The Roman tradition was the last who work get paid the first. And so mixing the, the Jewish tradition and the Roman tradition, these folks were in line to get paid. And they saw the ones who started at 5 o'clock get paid a denarius. And they said, well, that's great. They're getting paid a denarius. Those of us have been out here for 12 hours. We're going to get paid a whole lot more. And they're real excited. And then they started looking over their shoulders and said, wait a minute. Why, the last ones were getting paid as much as we got paid. And we bore the pain of the heat of the day. This doesn't make any sense. 
I should receive more because I worked harder. I should receive more because of who I am. After all, I have seniority. I've worked for years and years and years. I tithe. I'm active in my church. I love my family. Those who show up at 3 o'clock obviously don't love their family enough to get early in the morning working. They must know somebody. They must be the boss's son or the boss's daughter. In fact, you can hear them. We deserve more, right? We deserve more than those who work simply an hour. We're better workers. We have better families. We are more responsible. Then the mantra today might be, well, hey, we might just sue. When someone we deem, and the emphasis on we, deem unworthy, actually receives preferential treatment, it seems to not make any sense at all because we're the workers. We deserve to be lifted up and given praise. So as I thought of that word, deserve, a question came to my mind. Do we really want God to give us what we deserve? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't want to go there. I don't want to force God to give me what I deserve from God. But what was described here was our human kingdoms, our human organization, our, our human structures. But see, Jesus said something incredible throughout the book uh, in the Gospel of Matthew that the kingdom has come near. This is a different kingdom, opposed to all that seniority stuff, opposed to all that deserving stuff, opposed to having worked work for years and years and deserving more. See, the kingdom of God is somehow different because it's not based on seniority. It's not based on merit. It is not based on time served. It is not based on what we deserve. It is based on God's grace. That it doesn't matter when we show up. Because the angels in heaven will celebrate whenever we finally do. For God celebrates the same for those who have heard the call and respond to the call of God since the time there are seven, as much as the one who came to Jesus on their deathbed at 97. You see, it's all equal in God's eyes. Because we're all the same to God. No matter who we are, no matter what nationality, we hail, we are the same. No matter how much we work, no matter how little we work, in God's eyes we are all on equal footing. No one's any different. Because the truth be known, saints, nobody, not you, not me, not anybody else in the whole world, deserves God's grace. It's not earned but it's given. There is no special time affixed to our salvation. And when we finally show up, when we finally get it, when we finally get the word of God absorbed into our psyche and into our very soul, guess what? There is celebration on the streets of gold. There is singing from the choir of angels. There's celebration. So if you are unsure, if you are searching, if you are questioning, if you are even just a little bit angry, or just not ready to commit to a life of faith, God loves you just the same as God loves the 90-year veteran. 
because since Christ is worthy, we too are worthy. And we are welcomed because we are loved. So saying salvation is not about what you do or what you don't do. It's not about time served. It's not about what clothes you wear or don't wear. It's not how you sing or not sing. It's all about accepting the power and grace of Jesus Christ in your life. And whenever you do that, there's going to be a celebration in heaven. You are blessed and welcomed when you finally show up with the same front row seat as everybody else. Hearing God's words ringing in, in your ears, well done, good and faithful servant. But there's one more thing before we partake of the Lord's Supper that Jesus said. We need to celebrate those new to the faith. We need to celebrate those who came. We need to celebrate all who have come to know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in their life. No matter how old they are, no matter how long they've been of faith, we need to celebrate their entry. Saints, there is no seniority in God's kingdom. No sliding scale. No rank. No time card. Only grace, mercy, and love. Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come near. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. God's kingdom can be a reality in this life. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite Pastor Modesto to come forward as we celebrate together of Holy Communion. This communion table is not the table of Fields United Methodist Church, nor the United Methodist Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And all are welcome to this table, all who seek a closer relationship with God and with one another. So let us come humbly, acknowledging, especially on this day, as we celebrate World Communion Sunday, that we are one, no matter the language we speak, no matter what we look like or where we, where we belong and where we are. We are one in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let us join together in praying the prayer of great thanksgiving found on page 17 of your hymnal. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the Lord. 
Mediante el bautismo de su sufrimiento, muerte y resurrección, diste el nacimiento de tu iglesia. Nos libraste de la esclavitud, del pecado y de la muerte e hiciste con nosotros un nuevo pacto mediante el agua y el espíritu. Nos comisionó ser tus testigos hasta el último rincón del mundo y a ser discípulos de todas las naciones y hoy su familia en todo el mundo se junta alrededor de su santa mesa. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples. Pastor, will you break the bread? After the supper had ended, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, blessed it, and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renueva nuestra comunión con tu iglesia por todo el mundo, y fortalecela en cada nación y en medio de cada pueblo, para dar testimonio fielmente en tu nombre, mediante el poder de tu espíritu, hazlo uno con Cristo, uno con los demás, y uno en la obra del ministerio a todo el mundo, hasta que Cristo venga en la victoria final y podamos todos participar del banquete celestial. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. The ushers, please come forward.
fire. This is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. This is the blood of Christ. pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this gift of everlasting life. Now by partaking of this bread and of this wine of your body and your blood, that we become one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. Sanctify us by your Holy Spirit, that we may do your work with joy and celebration in our souls. Let the people of God say, Amen. Let us now stand and sing our closing hymn.
Now may the love of God, the peace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. Amen. <laughs>